Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have this, which is the Acer Aspire C24865 All-in-One. And what we are going to be doing today is doing a SSD upgrade. We are going to be fitting a 2.5-inch uh, SATA SSD to replace the hard drive in this system, but we will also take a look at how you can upgrade the memory and potentially fit an NVMe uh, M2 drive as well. So our first job is we are going to take our pry tool and just lift out these two little rubber covers. These cover four screws in the back which hold on this uh, stand. And to do this my normal screwdriver set is actually the holder is too wide so we're going to go with this long uh, bit instead on a larger screwdriver and what we want to do is just slot in and remove the four screws down in these wells. Uh, this screwdriver isn't a magnetic bit, uh, so we aren't going to lift these out at the same time. We're just going to undo them and then they should lift up with the stand when we remove that. So with three and four all done, all undone now. So with that done, we should be able to lift free the stand. And then just recover the screws from in here. And that then gives us a single screw which we can see in here. And we can use the smaller screwdriver bit now, but for the moment I'll just use the larger one. And we can remove that screw as so. With that done, we now need to get our pry tool. And what we're going to do is start at the side and try and get in under the edges of this back panel. So this runs to here, so where the sort of bulge is on the back of the monitor, all the computer is contained down here. And this has been off once because I was looking at how to do it. The first time it was really quite tricky and required a fair bit of force. Um, so let's see how it goes the second time. So in on the sides here, and because it's been off once and just been refitted, it's a little easier. So don't be, um, you know, don't be concerned if it's requiring a bit more force than it is for me here. And then what we're going to do is just sort of pull this up, and you can get in here to get in, and then there's like a little notch. So you want to get along and over that if possible and that will then pop this side and same on this side get in sort of near the edge and then up on top of the metal there uh, we should have also have removed that little plastic uh, rubber gasket but it will just pull out if it's still in place now we're going to try and go to the front and again just getting our tool in and we should be able to just pull on this back panel now, freeing up along the front a bit. And with a little bit of working, this should then pop free. So going to our smaller screwdriver, and the 2.5 inch drive is held in here. With these two screws, And with that removed, it then allows us to just slide out the drive like so. If you want to access the other components, we have these seven screws which hold those in place. So we're going to remove those. These screws are all the same size. Now with those removed, obviously there are these cables which sort of come through here on the back. 
So we can't go pulling this straight off yet. Instead, we what we want to undo is first of all unplug this speaker cable and route the wiring for the two speakers out from this. We then also want to unplug, I believe this is possibly the IR or the power button connector, probably power button connector. So pull this up and out of the way. Uh, this one here, I've rooted it underneath at the moment, but it may go, depending how the machine's been assembled, it may be running over the top here. So we're going to unplug that. And then the fan connector here as well. Again, just gently pulling out those connectors. And with that done, we're going to lift out this speaker to make things a bit easier to keep that cable out of the way. We can then lift off this shield panel. And move that out the way like so. So once inside, we can see here we have a pair of DIMM slots. So if you want to replace the memory modules, the usual process of just pulling on these little legs on the side, and then we can insert our new module, obviously to go into the top, same as that, but we can insert angled up slightly and then press down to clip into place. Same if you want to add an additional module here. If you want to add an M2 NVMe drive, you will need a little retention screw but that similarly can just be inserted in, pressed down, and then the retention screw fitted there. We are not doing that today, however. Uh, also, what could be done is say, if you wanted to replace your wireless card, you have a single screw here and the two clip-on aerials. Interestingly, these are actually the opposite way around to how they are labeled. Um, but here, so again, you can remove your card. We could say fit an Intel AX210 card in its place, but for now we'll just refit this one. Screw it back down and I will reconnect the connectors in the same way that they were previously, just by pressing down until they clip on in place. Whilst in here, we're also going to take a look at the fan and give just the front edge of the heatsink a clean, because we might as well. So we have two screws holding the fan in place. With those removed, we can lift the fan out and see that we have quite a dusty heatsink here. So I'm just going to give that a quick clean. Now with that done, we can take the fan, put it back into place and refit the two screws. We can now then take this cover panel and we're going to line it up. We're going to make sure we pull these cables through. So I found the best way to route this cable is actually inside the shield. So I'm going to run that in and to the correct position. Elsewhere, we want to make sure we're just not trapping any of the cables where they shouldn't be. And then we want to angle the back of this so it goes in over the USB ports and inside the metal piece at the back so that it presses down correctly. We want to make sure this one then is pulled through and plugged in. And then we can refit the screws to hold the shield into place.
with those refitted, we can now reroute our other cables. So we're going to drop this speaker back into position and begin clipping in the cable for that. Once we have everything routed for it, we can then plug it in. This one down here as well. Simply presses back into place. And the fan connector as well. This comes in under here and pushes in from below. And so with that done, we can actually then do what we originally came into this machine to do, which is to fit up our 2.5 inch drive. So to swap this over, we have four screws in the base of the old drive. Undoing those releases the drive from its bracket. We can then lift that out and put it to one side. Take our new SSD and line it up. And screw it into place. We can then slot it back into position. Making sure again we're not pulling this cable. And then screw it down. With all that done, all that's left to do is to fit the back panel now. So we're going to take that, line it up, and just clip it back down onto the machine. We then have the single screw to hold that in place. And finally, we need to return the stand to the system. So to do this, I find easiest way is because I don't have that magnetic screwdriver bit, I'm just going to use a small pair of tweezers to position the screws in here and then screw them in. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have, do please let me know in the comments below and let me know what you upgraded and how you found the improvement. Uh, if it was helpful as well, do give this a like and hit subscribe if you would like to see more videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.